So, I had told you guys several weeks back that I was going to do, or a couple months ago now probably, that I was going to do a review of Scream 5 or Scream 2022. I'm calling it Scream 5. Uh, I refuse to call the movie the exact same name as the original. It doesn't make any sense. Um, they actually, I think, even make fun of that in the movie, which give, give them some credit for that. But, uh, no, I was going to post this after I saw it in the theater. I was going to do this. Then I, I got kind of busy and decided to wait until I got to watch it again. And so just last night, I re-watched the movie... Um, on Paramount Plus so I've seen it twice now and my opinion on it did change a little bit after watching it again uh, I, I would say I enjoyed it more the second time I, I guess the theater experience and you know there's something special about seeing a screen movie for the first time it's basically it's one of the only movies um, horror movies anyway where um, you not, not only that you don't know who the killer is, but they always show you who they are. They always introduce them to you. You always know, you always have the opportunity to guess who the killers are in Scream. Whereas, like, just as an example, like, I Know What You Did Last Summer, you know, written by the same person who wrote Scream and Dawson's Creek, which is another, uh, Dawson's Creek is actually shown in Scream 5, I'll get to that in a minute, but, um, no, so, and I know what you did last summer, there's no way for you to know who the killer is, like, you never see Ben Willis, and nobody's gonna be smart enough to be like, oh, yeah, it wasn't really David Egan, he got murdered by Susie's dad, and it was it's Susie's dad they ran, I'm like, nobody's gonna be able to figure that out, they don't show you him, but with Scream, you always know the people, and so seeing it in the theater, it's always a unique and fun experience, and you, know, you only get one shot at it. And you gotta go see it right away, or else you're gonna catch spoilers, and it's gonna ruin it. Um, so I did see it in the theater, and I will say, like, I thought it was a very good movie while watching it in the theater. What I didn't like was the ending. It was the, the, the killer reveal and the motive, which I thought was... Um, it, I thought it was so predictable that it wasn't even predictable. Like, I never saw it coming just because I was hoping they wouldn't do something so uh, basic, like so just obvious and easy to do. Uh, and so... If, you, if you've seen the movie, then you know the movie talks about uh, requels, which is the new term, I guess. That's what Halloween did, bringing back Jamie Lee Curtis. If you don't know what a requel is, a requel is when you take the original movie and get rid of everything else that came after it, and then you make a brand new sequel, which is what they did with Halloween 2018, again, the same name, and now they've continued it with Halloween Kills, and then Halloween Ends is coming next. Um, and it's exactly what they just did with uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre on Netflix. I don't know if you guys caught that or not. just came out straight to Netflix. It's like an hour and 20 minutes long. I did watch it, although I'm not a huge uh, uh, TCM fan. Uh, the second one with Chop Top is obviously probably the best one, in my opinion, most entertaining anyway. Um, but uh, I'm not a huge fan of that franchise. I, I am bringing it up for a reason, though. I don't know if I'm going to do a review for that movie. Probably not. Probably just kind of kind of mention it in here. Um, maybe I'll even uh, title this as having uh, uh, both of them in the title. Uh, as a double review for both of them, since they are both uh, uh, something I just recently watched. Um, one thing with the requels, though, and... Uh, so, with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, there's obviously the two main characters from the original movie died. Uh, Gunnar Hansen and uh, Marilyn Burns both died. So, the, the person they recast as Sally was good. I thought the movie was entertaining and for an hour and 20 minutes, it was good. One of the reasons I brought that up, um, this movie as well, is the fact that one thing I just noticed as rewatching Scream, there's, there's, there's something really sticking out at me that I'm going to address first 
that after watching Texas Chainsaw Massacre and watching Scream again, the one thing I noticed that is it's really starting to piss me off, actually, um, people seem to be, like, damn near immortal. Uh, like, they're all fucking belong in Highlander or something. So, in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, there was at least three people that got flat-out murdered and, like, came back to life. Sally being one of them, spoiler alert, if you watched it. I mean, she's fucking dead. Like, the, the cop driving the emergency vehicle, he was dead. Uh, the, the one, the main social media influencer was dead, lying on the floor. Like, and these people just come back to life. Well, that really caught my attention watching Texas Chainsaw. Like, these people really, like, they're taking so much damage. And they're literally, like, shown dead, and then they just resurrect and come back. Well, I didn't notice it as much in the theater, but having rewatched Scream last night, the same thing happens. Like, uh, everybody at the end, Gail is shot, and it's like she looks like she's gonna die, and she tells Sydney to go back in there, and then a little while later, it's like she was never shot. Sydney gets stabbed right through the gut, like nothing happened a few minutes later, the, the one killer, the male killer, I don't want to spoil it and give the names out, not that I could even remember them. Um, no, that's something I'll talk about. The, Sydney shot him in the leg, and but then he's walking around like nothing happened. And then Samantha got, the main character, got stabbed right through the freaking, like, kidney, twisted the knife, jams it in again, and then she's walking around just fine like nothing happened. Like, I mean, these people all should have been dead. I mean, it wasn't like a little quick stab like what Billy was doing with Stu in the original. I mean, these people, like, got, like, fucked up bad. They got stabbed. They got shot. They should all be dead. And at the end of the... Oh, and the, um, the, uh, Randy's, Randy's, uh, niece and nephew, the twins, uh, the male twin, dude, that guy got stabbed like a mother. He was bleeding out of his leg really bad, and then the killer tackled him and stabbed him, like, three times right through the ribs. And at the end, he's just, like, sitting in an ambulance like this. I don't know. These people took so much damage. Uh, it's like they're literally... I heard an analogy recently. They're like video game characters. They just... Nobody in these movies dies. They just take limitless damage. And it's... Uh, I don't know. It really caught my attention this time. I, I think the Texas Chainsaw Massacre kind of started it. Um... But, uh, yeah, so there's that. Oh, what was it I was just going to talk about that I, got, that I said I got to talk about that in a minute? Um, shit. I forgot what it was with this movie. Um, well, I guess starting from the beginning with Scream, um, uh, yeah. I liked the movie. I thought the movie was good. Um... I have to say, I was absolutely blown away when I saw Skeet Ulrich. When I saw Billy come back, I was stunned. I, I think everybody was. Nobody knew that was coming. And I think that I enjoyed the movie a lot. Okay? But I, I think it's because I'm a writer that considering what happened, it, this movie could have been so much better. The ending could have been so much better. It could have really... And they had such an opportunity. And I'm not going to say it was it was bad, because after re-watching it, I enjoyed it more, specifically because I was able to pay attention to it more, um, not being surrounded by people in the theater, I guess, and seeing it a second time, I was able to focus in. And the killers did say that what they were trying to do, the movie they were trying to make is actually what the movie should have been, in my opinion. So what actually happens was, you know, they're trying to frame Samantha as the killer, saying that in their movie, Samantha is the killer. She's Billy, spoiler alert, she's Billy Loomis's daughter. Oh, wow, you know, that should have been the movie. So when they first showed Billy in the mirror in the hospital, and he talks to her, he shouldn't have talked to her. Like, they should have just showed him, like, real fast. And you'd have been like, what the... F like, you may not even be able to pick up that it was Billy. 
right? And then as the movie went on, you should have seen him a little more. But they, uh, when she got, when Samantha got attacked in the hospital at the beginning, I thought it was a hallucination, and I actually thought to myself, "Oh shit, this seems like maybe one of my favorite horror movies is Secret Window, the Stephen King adaptation with Johnny Depp. If you know Secret Window, you know how that movie ends. That's almost where I thought Scream Five was going, and where I, I was so hoping it was going, um, because." They could have set that up, worked that around so good with her, with Samantha being the killer, making you think that she's, you know, the victim, seeing hallucinations. And then at the end, when she finally meets Sydney, she could have said something like, you know, I never met my dad. Uh, you know, he died, uh, he died before I was born. But you wouldn't know Billy was her dad. You would think she's the victim, Ghostface is coming after her, and then at the end, once they get into the house, once she set everyone up into the house, she could have said, and Sydney might have stopped and like, who, what did you say, how did you say your dad died again? And then she could have said like, he died right there on the floor, and like right there, where, where he died right where you're standing, because Sydney was right there, it could have been right there in the kitchen, like that. That would have been, and then the killer reveal, what could have happened then in the kitchen was suddenly Billy and Stu, Matthew Lillard and Skeet Ulrich could have both been in the movie in the kitchen as hallucinations talking to Samantha trying to help her out. Like, and you, know, you, can, you can picture Matthew Lillard being a fucking goon, like jumping all over Billy. Like that would have been... People would have lost their minds if Billy and Stu both would have been. And that's how I would have done it. I mean, that's what I wanted to see. I mean, I, I can tell you as someone in the theater, if Billy and Stu would have both showed up in the kitchen as the, the villains in Samantha's head, you want to talk about requel? Uh, which, Scream, you know, it didn't say it was a requel. I mean, it used that line and it was talking about them and obviously... It really did kind of uh, eliminate the sequels in a lot of ways. It really felt like, in a lot of ways, because of Billy Loomis being in the movie, that it was trying to kind of delete everything. Just an example, apparently um, Sidney is now married to Patrick Dempsey's character from Scream 3, which there was no mention of uh, Mark Kincaid in Scream 4. And you would think they would have been together and something would have been said. Now they say, like, Mark uh, multiple times, Mark and the kids. And I guess it was revealed from Radio Silence, the people who made the movie, the people who made Ready or Not, that, yes, it's supposed to be Patrick Dempsey that Sidney is married to. And that seems kind of weak, um, especially because, I don't know, because he was not mentioned in Scream 4. You would think they'd mention him then because it's the movie after they met. I don't know. It just seemed kind of... I mean, I, I don't really believe they worked together for those 10 years and then suddenly after Scream 4 they got together. When, I don't know. It seems hard to believe. But that was kind of annoying. Oh, I got, when I got sidetracked earlier, um, with, with, with Dawson's Creek being in Scream 5, when the, this is breaking the, the, the fourth wall, you could say. So, I don't know if you remember this, but in Halloween H2O... The kids in Halloween H2O are watching um, Scream on the TV. I think it's Halloween H2O. They're watching Scream on TV. And in Scream, Randy in the original Scream is watching Halloween. So they're watching a movie in which a character is fictionally watching a movie that is supposed to be fiction, but in their timeline it's real, if that makes sense. So you have Halloween characters watching a fictional movie where they're saying in the fictional movie that the Halloween world is fictional. So, and in, in Scream 5, Dawson's Creek comes on, and Scott, it's the horror movie episode from early on in Dawson's Creek. Kevin Williamson wrote Dawson's Creek Scream and I Know What You Did Last Summer. Scott Foley is shown in Scream 5. Scott Foley. He's Noel, he's, he's Noel from Felicity, I'm sorry. He's 
Roman Bridger. He's Sydney's brother from Scream 3. He's the killer in Scream 3. He's admittedly the person who made Billy do this. So they have Dawson's Creek in Scream 5 with Scott Foley on TV, the guy who was a killer in the third. So that's messed up. That's like breaking the fourth wall in a really weird way. Um, but I, I don't know. Most people aren't going to catch it. I'm sure it's an Easter egg, you know, that Radio Silence is trying to throw in there. But it is kind of weird. Um, uh, yeah, so that's what I wanted to say about what the uh, I thought the ending should have been. Um, and it was one, one thing I found kind of weird. Excuse me, I need to take a, take a drink of water for a minute. One thing I found kind of strange, it, it did almost, it almost seemed like they were kind of trying to make Billy the sympathetic victim in a lot of ways. He's like a dad now, this serial killer that ruined the lives of so many people and, you know, still to this day is ruining the lives of everybody in that town. Like just so much destruction over the years, like he's dad now. And it's his daughter, and he's trying to help his daughter. I, that's really weird to me. That's really weird. I, I don't know. There was something about that that was like, I don't know. And then like, um, you know, she she confronts when she she talks to Sydney, and Sydney talks to her, and you like think to yourself, yeah, dude, that was Sydney's that was Sydney's boyfriend. And so obviously she learns now Billy was cheating on her too, which that was never a thing. Like, no mention of that was made either. Like, Sydney's like, oh, God, not only was he a psycho, but he wasn't, you know, because I wouldn't have sex with him. He was screwing somebody else. Like, they don't even mention any of that. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. It was, it was, uh, it was a little weird. I, I don't know. I felt like Billy's the bad guy. And they made him, in a lot of ways, the good guy in this. Like, they redeemed him or something. And... I don't know, man. Just the thought of him and Stu, if you want to make, if you want to cash in on Requel, the thought of of him and Stu being in that kitchen again, in the house again, trying to finish what they started 25 years earlier through this girl's head, that the theater would have exploded. I mean, there would have been mass hysteria in the theater if that's what would have happened. So, that's my thoughts on that. Um, some other things. Uh, spoiler, obviously, I'm assuming anyone who's watching this has seen the movie. It's streaming. Anybody can watch it. Um, I mean, Dewey, Dewey getting killed, everybody knew that was coming, I think. Well, they gave it away in the trailer. When they showed Courtney Cox freaking out in that trailer, you knew there was no nothing else that could make her react that way other than Dewey getting killed. And it had to be. You knew somebody had to go. Um, one of the OG three had to go. Obviously, you know Marley. Marley Shelton got killed. She was only in the last movie, though. Um, but you knew Dewey was gonna bite the dust. Especially you knew it when the Broken Arrow theme came on, which that was one of the two things. So Dewey's theme song from Scream Two. You can YouTube search that if you don't know what it is. It's a, it's a theme song in the uh, Travolta Slater movie Broken Arrow. It's uh, Hans Zimmer made that that. That song from Scream Two that comes on every time Dewey shows up. Dewey's theme song. Yeah, it's back in this, which is crazy because it was only in Scream Two. Wasn't it any of the other movies? Not even the original. But it's back. And the moment I heard that, like I'm like, ah, he's dead. Like, it, like for sure he's dying. Like they're not bringing back his theme song unless it's the end, for sure. Uh, I did like when uh, when the when the uh, the grungy, trashy dude got got killed in the parking lot. The uh, Nick Cave, Red Right Hand song was back on in the car. That's the song that was playing. Uh, uh, Dwayne Barry had playing when he had Agent Scully cleave gagged in the trunk in the X Files, by the way. Um, the song Red Right Hand, that's like the Scream theme song. It's in all the movies except Scream 4. Um, yeah, that's the thing. Scream 4 did not have Red Right Hand in it. Uh, and like I said, none of the other movies except Scream 2 had uh, the Broken Arrow theme for Dewey. So that was kind of cool having that stuff come back. Um, obviously, being in the house 
you know, the Stu, Stu's house. I mean, there was a lot of um, good tributes to the original and stuff, and uh, you know, the horror cliches and stuff when the, when the group was together, when Dewey got, when uh, uh, there's a good tribute to Wes Craven, obviously, with Hicks's son being named Wes, and he gets killed, and then at the party, the, the, the twins like, to Wes! They're talking about Wes Craven, they're not talking about the character in the movie. I mean, that's kind of obvious. And that was something going into this that was a little, um, going to be a little interesting, I thought to see a Scream movie not directed by Wes Craven, and I was actually kind of excited about it, to see what someone else would do, and I thought it, it was a Scream movie. I mean, I, I it felt a lot of suspense, and of course, I gotta add, it's got a great ducting in it, absolutely, Jenna Ortega getting, uh, she's the, the duct taped in the closet person, only one person duct taped in, in the new Scream. That's a little shocking. Um, the only other time that's ever happened is Scream 2 with Jerry O'Connell. Uh, and you really barely even see anything in that. Like, that is split second nothing. Um, all the other movies have had uh, at least two. Scream, Scream 3 had uh, three people. Because Courtney Cox, a female, finally got it in Scream 3. But only one person ducked up in, in Scream 5. And it's good. Um, seeing it in HD on the on my big screen as opposed to in the theater, like actually getting to see it, um, really good. It's very sh it's short, not O'Connell short, but it's not it's not long at all. But there's a lot of good close-ups. And when I do run it here on the show, which I will eventually, I will be able to do really good editing with it for sure. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity with that, and it'll be really easy to do too because it's not going to be really long um, and I can pull from different movies with different source pieces of source material so that'll be really easy and fun to do um, but the DIDC like I said it's good um, the, the close up the gag itself is phenomenal uh, prob probably probably the best gag uh, of the whole franchise I, I would say they, they did really good um, with that one as short as it is you can't complain I mean you got we got something out of it um, but, uh, yeah, just, you know, taking a look at, at all of that, um, good movie, I would recommend it to anybody. If I was going to rank the franchise, like, one through five, I just, I'm just so, I so wanted to see Billy and Stu in that kitchen again. And then just knowing that they could have done it because Billy was in the movie and Stu, Matthew Lillard, wants to be in this movie so bad. He's wanted to be, he's, he wants Stu to come back so bad. Knowing that they could have done it and they didn't, I mean, and, and you know, if they were to do that in Scream 6, because it's coming, Scream 6 is coming. If they were to make Samantha snap and have her and Billy uh, Billy and Stu in her head like that, if they were to do that now, I think it would be wasted. Like, I just, I think, like, now it wouldn't be special because I, I was just blown away seeing Skeet Aldrich. Like, that was just huge. That was the highlight of the movie. I think most fans would agree. There's a reason they kept that so quiet. Um, you know. Oh, yeah, De Dead Meat was in it. <laughs> James and his now wife Chelsea were in it with a fake YouTube channel. That was uh, entertaining. Nobody in the theater said anything when they came on. I almost yelled out dead meat, but I didn't. Um, and I don't know how they managed to keep that quiet, that cameo. Um, I'll, be, I'll be referencing them uh, in, a, in another uh, video I'll be talking about here in the near future. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you guys watch them. He's got like five and a half million subscribers or something. Uh, his show is fairly similar to ours here in a lot of ways. Fair use program. Um, so I, I, that is a, that's one of the only YouTube creators I watch regularly uh, just because I do enjoy the, the content. Um, personally, um, you know, I don't, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> some things he does kind of frustrates me, but uh, uh, professionally, the content he produces, I really enjoy. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't really know what else to say. Um, you know, and as far as, uh, you know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre goes, I would recommend that as well. Like I said, it's on Netflix. 
Um, I thought as a requel, that was good. The only thing with that, though, I don't recall them clarifying anything as far as what happened with the rest of the family. And actually, Dead Meat did a podcast on that new Texas Chainsaw Massacre recently. And one thing I would say um, that they had said that I agree with is Leatherface is not a good standalone villain. He needs the rest of the Sawyer family, uh, which is why 2 is so good in the original. Um, and there just was no family. There's just him. He's not a good standalone villain. Trying to make him like Jason or Michael doesn't really work that well, I don't think. But, uh, yeah, so with the recoil there, like, you have... The original is The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Chainsaw is two words. The remake is The Texas Chainsaw Massacre with Chainsaw, one word. And then the new one is Texas Chainsaw Massacre, one word. So they remove the the... So the original has the, two words. The remake has the, one word. The new one has no the, one word. So not the same name for any of them. So I'll give them credit on that. Uh, you know, it was it was interesting. I thought the storyline in the new Texas Chainsaw was, was pretty good uh, for the most part. I, I did enjoy uh, seeing the, uh, having the girl. It was, it was a lot of, a lot of it was some political commentary for sure with uh uh, clashing sides there, uh, but uh, they, they had people, you know, unite together uh, to try and kill Leatherface, uh, you know, even though they definitely had their differences and came from different parts of the world, but I, I found it, I found it fairly, fairly entertaining and a decent story, and I'll be talking more about that kind of, uh, some things with that uh, in the next R&R &R episode, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's what I have here for, for talking about Scream. Um, and the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, I, I, I don't. I can't think of anything else off the top of my head uh, that I that I wanted to talk about with uh, with Scream. No, it was uh, it was an enjoyable movie at the theater. Like I said, Screams don't come along often, and uh, when they do, they're they're a special theater experience. That's what they excel at. You know, it's all, you get one shot for that mystery to find out and. This one definitely fell a little flat. The the payoff for four was definitely better than five. Oh, I was gonna rank the movies. As as the movie as a whole, I thought Scream Five was probably the second best one after the original. Had they done the ending, the, the storyline, the ending the way I wanted it done, I think it could have been the best one. I think it could have been better than the original had they really done that ending. I think it had potential. Um, uh, Scream 4 is very good as well. It's hard to say. The, the payoff, the ending in 4 is a lot better than 5, I think. Those two are, are very good and um, right up there at the top. I find Scream 3 to be much more entertaining than Scream 2. Scream 2 is probably a better movie. Scream 3 is, has a, a high entertainment value. It's, 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 it's a movie. Of all the Scream movies... I could actually probably watch Scream 3, uh, probably the original, and then Scream 3, and maybe 5 now, but 3 is very entertaining. It's not a good movie at all, but it's got a lot of entertainment value to it and replay value, whether it's funny lines or, you know, there's a lot of characters in that movie. Oh, that's the final thing I want to say about the new Scream which was different. When I was in the theater, this was something that really struck out, uh, stuck out to me uh, really clearly that I felt while watching the movie. I was not invested into those characters at all. I, there, and it felt like there were so many of them and they were all so not important. I did not know their names. I didn't know anybody's names of these new kids in the new Scream movie. I had no idea who they were. Um... Scream 4, I felt like I knew pretty much who everyone was for the most part. Scream 5, even with all those actors, or Scream 3, I mean, with all those actors, I knew who they were. Scream 2, I knew who all those, you know, I felt like this movie, I just didn't know or care about these characters at all. And I don't know. There was something about it where it was just like, okay, there's just a lot of bodies here. Um... Uh, and they're trying, to, I guess, trying to make a lot of different suspects and show you a lot of different people. But it just, I don't know, kind of felt, 
kind of felt forced in a lot of ways, I guess, and the people just weren't weren't relatable or, or likable enough. Other than a couple of them, I didn't just didn't know their names. Uh, maybe they didn't do a good enough job of introducing. Another thing, um, just uh, I realized they they probably didn't want to pay them as much or have them on set as much because they cost more, and the story was about Woodsboro, but. With Sydney, I felt like we needed to see her kids. Or see... I'm not saying they should have paid Patrick Dempsey. Maybe they should have just not made her husband Patrick Dempsey's character because he wasn't mentioned in 4 again. Excuse me. I don't know why he was necessary to be mentioned when they didn't do it in 4. They should have shown her with her husband and with her kids. Uh, something. I mean, they showed the back of a baby stroller. You didn't see the kid. I mean... Something about, like, I felt not invested in her as a, a, a mom, you know, coming to town to defend her family either. It just kind of seemed like they were forcing a lot of things and just like, yeah, you know, this is the way it is, accept it. Um, you know, Sydney just comes to town real quick. Kind of similar to, a little bit similar to the ending of the new Ghostbusters, where they just wanted to get those characters back again and they didn't do anything to build up it was a nice surprise in ghostbusters but i mean yeah i mean i wasn't really surprised we all knew it was going to happen but i just felt like more of these characters they did enough with dewey and gale but I, sydney is the main character it's sydney it's her movie it's scream like she should have been shown first by herself before dewey ever called her there was not enough sydney not, and I realize they're trying to pass a torch, I guess, but Sydney's still alive, so she's going to be in the next one. I mean, it's her movie. It'll probably always be her movie. I don't think they'll ever kill her, because Wes Craven would not have liked that. He, Wes Craven always regretted killing Nancy Thompson, Heather Langenkamp, in the third Nightmare on Elm Street, um, even though he technically did not make that movie. He was on board with the writing at the beginning, but he didn't make Scream 3, or Nightmare 3. Um, Dream Warriors. Um, so yeah, I don't think Sydney is ever getting killed, but that is just uh, yeah. So I think that is it. I think that's what I would say. If I'm gonna rank the movies, probably one, five, four, three, and two as far as entertainment value, or as far as like good movies go, entertainment value, probably one, three, five. Four, two, but that's it. Yeah, check both those out. Check out the new Scream. Check out the new TCM. Uh, they're both uh, both worth watching for sure. And uh, yeah, I don't know when the next movie review I will do will be, but uh, a lot of fun. Check them out. I'll see you guys in the next KK, which is the most important. Uh, very difficult editing has been going on. It's tough. I'm getting there. Channel memberships coming soon, other fun stuff, other announcements, new live action, uh, the last project that was filmed, yeah, so, and then plans for some more stuff as well. So I will see you guys soon, thank you.